Home buyers, do you need to worry about earnest money? Hell no! I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know today so you can feel comfortable. Alright guys, today I want to bring you three big things that you want to think about when we're talking about earnest money, right? So what is earnest money? Earnest money is when you're putting a purchase agree agreement together as a buyer for a seller, it's the initial money that you put down, right? So there are a couple different myths that people get confused when it comes to earnest money. I want to clear those up today for you, alright? So myth number one is that you have to put loads of money down as your earnest money. Now I'll tell you, as a realtor, we try to get that amount up, right? Because it gets skin in the game, but you can put as little as 500 to $1,000 down and that's completely fine. It's really dependent upon the seller and a lot of times the price of the property that we're working with, right? So if you're looking at a property that's $200,000, $250,000, it's completely normal to put $1,000, $2,000 down. If you're talking about a property that's $500,000, I'd say you're usually gonna see about $5,000 on that, right? So generally speaking, a good rule of thumb is 1% of the purchase price. Now remember, that money doesn't just go off to nowhere. You can use that money in any way you want, but the most common way is it's used to put against your closing costs or against any money that you're gonna put down, all right? So if you're putting 20% down on a $200,000 home and you put $2,000 down as earnest money, that 20% down, that $40,000, you can use that two grand against that and now you only have to show up to closing with $38,000. All right, so what's myth number two, right? Myth number two is if you don't purchase that home as the buyer, you lose your earnest money. So a lot of times buyers are scared to put a whole bunch of earnest money down. I get it, but here's the truth of the matter. You have to follow all of the rules, right? Whatever you wrote into that purchase agreement as a buyer and the seller signed off on it, those are the rules of the game. As long as you follow the rules of the game, if you don't purchase the home but you followed the rules, you're good, you get your earnest money back. So if you've got an inspection contingency in there and you look at the inspection and decide you don't wanna move forward, not a problem, here's your earnest money, talk to you later, right? You're good to go. If you've got a financing contingency in there and you lose your job or my gosh, if you go out and buy a boat, don't buy a boat, but if you go buy a boat, your lender's gonna tell you, I'm sorry, you lost your job, you bought a boat, I can't get you the funds that you need to buy this house. Your financing contingency unfortunately kicks in and the unfortunate thing is you don't get to buy the home, but you do get out of the property and you get your earnest money back because you had that contingency, right? So when do you lose your earnest money? You lose your earnest money if you don't follow the rules of the game, okay? So if you don't have a contingency in that purchase agreement, but you just wake up on a Tuesday and say, oh, I just don't wanna buy this house. Too bad, you gotta buy it. If you don't buy it, you risk losing your earnest money, and there's this friendly little phrase called specific performance. You can be taken to court for specific performance, and the seller can force you to purchase the home if you are able to do so, right? So be careful of that. It's not something we see a lot. Usually we work it out, but it can happen. Okay, so the third thing I wanna talk about is how you get your money back, right? You don't just get your money back if the inspection contingency saves your butt, right? You decide you don't wanna go forward because of the inspection contingency. You should get your money back. In 99% of cases, you do get your money back, but what can happen is a seller can argue that they don't want to give you the money back, okay? So now you have to look at state law. You have to look inside the purchase agreement. Do we go to court? Do we go to arbitration? Are we in a scenario where we can look back and decide that the escrow company can make that decision? You look at what the laws are and it'll tell you what you need to go to to make that decision. But generally speaking, if you followed all of the rules and you followed all of the laws, you're going to get your money back. It may take some time, you might have to jump through some hoops to do it, but if you follow the rules of the game, you'll always get your money back. All right guys, those are the three big things that you need to think of when you think of earnest money. If you like this video, I want you to go down and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and you guys, stay fired up.